He's our favorite red blue friendly neighborhood web slinger. Welcome to some things we'd like to see in the new Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Today we'll be talking about the top 7 things we'd like to see in the new Spider-Man movie. Be warned, there might be some spoilers. You're the Spider-Man. Number 7. Peter Parker being an actual teenager. For one thing that we know about the Spider-Man universe is the fact that Spider-Man is a teenager. Spider-Man is a teen, he has teen problems, and he deals with them as a teen would. Now, throw in the fact that he's a teen who also gets the powers of a spider, and then you have a, one of the most amazing comic book characters ever created. Now, from all the movies that we've seen, they have never actually touched in on this. They've always done Spider-Man in his later years, when he's in college, and they have never focused in on the one thing that we always want to see in Spider-Man. We want to see teen Spider-Man. We want to see Peter Parker dealing with his new life as a superhero. While also being a teenager and having to deal with Superheroes living in the world. No, I am too. I stole a shield. Wow. Did he beat me up? That's something we've never actually seen in any of the Spider movies. It's just been Spider Man on his own. So it'd be great to see the view of teenagers reviewing what it's like to live in a city that's constantly being saved by a man in a metal suit, gods, a giant green man, and a guy with a bow and arrow, and another guy with a shield. Number six Black Cat, aka Felicia Hardy. For all those who don't know who Black Cat is, aka Felicia Hardy, she is, for all intents and purposes, a cat burglar with a penchant interest in our web slinging hero. When she's not stealing jewels, she spends her time doing the next best thing, seducing our teenage hero, leading to some of the best and funniest awkward moments in the Spider-Man universe as this awkward teenage Peter Parker has to deal with this seductive temptress. Then I have to ask, are we going to be bad guys together, partner? Or just plain bad? <laughs> Was it something I said? Number five. Craven the Hunter, AKA Sergei Kravinov. Wait, are you a crazy hunter or a crazy landscaper? I'm confused. I am Craven the Hunter. What I hunt, I consume. What I consume, I become. Huh? Aside from looking like the basis of an 80s hair metal band, Craven the Hunter is actually one of Spider Man's more interesting villains, whose only goal in life is to become the world's greatest hunter. And unfortunately for Spider Man, he just happens to be one of the greatest prey. Armed with a variety of tools and various gadgets, along with super strength, speed, sensors from a magical potion, a teaser, or at least an Easter egg. Introducing this character would surely be remiss. Number four, no more big origin story arc. Look, we all know the story. Boy gets bitten by a genetically altered spider. Boy then develops spider powers. Boy's uncle dies from stopping a robber. Spider boy then becomes Spider-Man, then fights crime. We don't need this story being told to us again for half the movie and missing out on all the greatness that can occur. It can be the first five minutes, just in and out, that's all we need, nothing else. Continue on with the new story that we want to see. Number three, Venom Symbiote. Venom. If there's one thing Spider-Man can't be without, it's Venom. A symbiotic alien taking the form of a black Spider-Man suit, then developing into a terrifying alien enemy, is something that should be included in this movie. With an Easter egg of some sort, it wouldn't go amiss. And it would lead up to a great sequel movie where you can finally get to our Spider-Man's most terrifying enemies, Carnage. Number two, Vulture's backstory slash motive. If there's one thing that hurts the Spider-Man movie franchise, apart from executives, <laughs> it has to be villains with terrible backstories or motives. Whether it be a man controlled by four robotic octopus arms who wants to create a renewable source of energy that will end up destroying the city, to a man who decides he wants to turn everyone to lizards, most Spider-Man villains in the movie history don't have good motives or backstories. But from the look of Homecoming's trailers and teasers, it seems to be Michael Keaton's Vulture does have a distinct and defined backstory and motives. The world's changed. It's time we change too. Which will bring us a fresh breath of air for Spider-Man villains. Not gonna stop me. Number one, 
Quips! If there's one thing we love more than the spider himself, it has to be his quips. Spider-Man's iconic banter as he dispatches villains probably has to be one of the greatest sources of comedic interest in comic book history. Wait a minute, you guys aren't the real Avengers. Hulk gives it away. New move I'm working on, not bad. Oh my God, this feels so strange. And has been sorely missed throughout the entire Spider-Man movie franchise. We got a tiny taste of it in Captain America's Civil War. You have a metal arm? Oh God. Hey buddy, I think you lost this. But it wasn't enough. We want more. And now with Spider-Man Homecoming, it looks to be all banter, all quips, everything that we love about Spider-Man. So strap yourself in for this movie because it looks like it's just going to be quips, quips and more quips from our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Hey, could you do me a favor? Hold on to that. Is this anybody's bite? If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below about what you like the most. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and see you next time for more 7 Things We'd Like to See. Hey, just a second. Coming. Hey. We have thin walls here.